Welcome to the Beauty and You podcast, a safe place created for all women to come relax, get inspired, and be constantly reminded that they have not lost the ability to be who they once were. Join us as we dive into the true meaning of rediscovery through inspiring guests and topics such as healing, self-love, and creating a positive mindset. So sit back, relax, and get comfortable as we dive into this week's episode. Here's your host, Chiquita Mack. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to another episode of the Beauty in You podcast. I am so excited for this, you guys. I have been waiting. You're about to be motivated and inspired once you hear this wonderful story that we are about to share today. Our guest is the owner of Mill Spouse Conversations and Mamas and Coffee. She is a stroke warrior and demonstrates a tremendous amount of resilience and determination. She is the life of every party and brings joy, wisdom, and humor into each and every person that she meets. Welcome to the Beauty in You podcast, Sybil Jones. How are you? Hey, I am great, girl. It is it is Saturday. I'm sitting here like, ooh, and it's a beautiful day here in Bahrain. So I'm going out to the beach after this. <laughs> I love it. And we, yes, we are all the way in Bahrain. So we had to make this time difference thing work out. I was struggling. I was like, how, calculate the one past the, okay, did I get the time right? <laughs> <laughs> but I got it together. I got it together. <laughs> I am so fascinated by your journey. I follow you on social media. That's how um, we're connected. And I just felt like your story was just so inspirational and so inspiring. Um, I want you to walk me through your rediscovery journey. If you could start with your stroke, because you are a stroke warrior. And I just think that is a great place to start. But can you walk me through that journey and your journey to rediscovery? All right. So yes, I am a stroke warrior. Um, I had a severe ischemic stroke on April 17th of 2021. It was a Saturday. And with today been a Saturday, I won't lie. Saturdays are really hard for me. They are really, really hard. But that particular Saturday, it was a normal everyday Saturday for me. Mm -hmm. Woke up, um, fussed at my three kids, <laughs> tell them to clean the house, um, took my middle daughter. Um, she rides horses. So she had um, a riding lesson that day, took her to the barn, was out there for about three to four hours, felt fine, went home, took a shower. Um, it was my husband's farewell party. My husband's active duty Navy. And uh, we were preparing to move to San Diego from Northern Virginia at that time. So got dressed, was all cute, looking good, feeling good. <laughs> and his farewell party was at a at a brewery in Northern Virginia. Felt fine. We ate, we laughed, um, talked. I did have a beer. And as the evening went on, it was actually, it's, it all happened suddenly. I just felt drunk and I couldn't see anything. And... My husband was sitting at one end of the table and I was at another end because I'm a talker. So I was running my mouth in there. <laughs> the gentleman next to me, this is, they told me this after the fact that he noticed that my speech began to slur. My husband said he looked down at the end of the table and I just had this blank stare. Immediately they ran down, got him to come up to the, to where I was sitting and they noticed the full, he noticed the full facial droop. So my entire left side of my face was droop. Right. Signs of stroke. Right. This was all within a matter of seconds. Um, and I collapsed. I have no recollection of this. They did call 911, mm -hmm. got me to Anova Fairfax. They immediately knew it was a stroke. They gave me a clot buster to break up the clot. It didn't work. So they transported me to their trauma hospital. And my husband had to make that decision what to do. And the procedure they did, it's still fairly new. So medical wise, you know, they're like, well, the survival rate, it's, ugh. but my husband made the decision and I'm here today 
Thank yes. you, dear. Thank, Thank you. God. Um, but I tell him that his party must have been boring. I was like, dude, did I need to be the, did I need to bring some joy to this party? I oh took him God. up too far that night though. I'm sorry, my bad. My <laughs> <laughs> but um, my stroke was due to a rare cause. Mm -hmm. And so I now have a stent in my right carotid artery, right mm -hmm. side of my neck. But I had none of the commonly known risk factors of a stroke. Mm -hmm. Again, rare cause. But I was in the hospital. I was in the ICU stroke unit. I went through speech therapy, physical therapy, occupational therapy. My children, like very humbling, my children were taking care of me. And that was that was hard. And I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry because like You're I said, fine. Saturdays are, are still hard, right? Yeah, because absolutely. it was a normal, typical Saturday. We had pictures that I've looked at numerous of times. Picture mm -hmm. of me and my husband just maybe an hour before my stroke. Just wild. Yeah. But I'm here today to talk about it and share. And I'm really working to bring awareness to stroke especially that rare cause, but also the signs of stroke because they could have easily chalked it up to me being drunk. Yeah. Right. Oh, I'm a Navy spouse. We're at a farewell part. Oh, she's drunk. She's drunk. Nah, nah man. <laughs> but yeah, I walking, just living. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Couldn't drive. They, I couldn't drive. Wow. So all my independence was gone. And I was mm -hmm. riding with my, at that time, 16 year old, 17, 16. She was 16. I want to ride with you. I want to do it myself. And yeah. yeah. But I was also like, you make me nervous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just got this thing. <laughs> wow. How long was your recovery period? So I was in the hospital for a month, for a week. Okay. Um, they did release me because my stroke wasn't health related. Okay. So they did release me, but I can, but I did continue outpatient physical therapy, occupational therapy and speech therapy. But I went back in the hospital for a one day procedure for the stent placement. Okay. But then I ended up staying for a week. Because, you know, Sybil can't be simple with anything. I always have to, you know, <laughs> cause drama. <laughs> My blood pressure plummeted and they couldn't stabilize me. So I had to stay in for an additional week, week and a couple of days. Then I was out. Um, they did move our PCS back. Mm -hmm. The Navy worked with us on that. I did PCS to San Diego, in which I then continued my physical therapy and occupational therapy. I still wasn't able to drive. <laughs> mm. And I saved my recovery. I am still recovering now. And it'll be three years in, in April. But um, I'm now on the mental health side of it, which, okay. again, is an area that I think Within the stroke community, people don't realize, right? You're looking for the physical scars of stroke, but that there, there is a mental health side of it. And that has been my Achilles heel right there. <laughs> yeah. With anybody, I think uh, mental health is not easy. Once you start digging, you know, once you get into the, the therapy side or there's the words mental health, I think there's a stigma around it. So definitely bringing awareness to mental health overall and that you're doing it I think is it's good it's good yes, and it's a start I, and I fought them I fought therapy I did not want to seek therapy I my husband he was like no you need to seek therapy you need help um and you know I tell people and I'm very open about it I do take medication for my for my mental health mm -hmm. to just balance myself. And when I share that with people, they're really shocked. They're like, but no, I'm like, yeah, things change. Things mm -hmm. did change for me mentally after my stroke. Mm -hmm. And 
I'm okay with saying, yeah, I, I need to see help. It's important, but that's, that's strength in that. And for me, I, I fought meant I had a therapist too, and I still seek it when I need it. Just not as much right now, but in the beginning of my rediscovery journey, I fought therapy too, due to I'm the strong one. And somehow I stuck seeking help to not being as strong anymore. When reality, it's, it just adds to my character of saying like, hey, I realized that I need someone to talk this through. I need someone to help me through my depression. I need someone to help me through my anxiety. What is this thing I'm feeling every day? Like what is going on or why am I in this hole? I don't even know what's happening right now. Um, and then I put on the mom face, which is just smiling, <laughs> you know, and I'm not even feeling that for real. So I had to, and I'm a bit like, you know, you girl, go get help, go see it. I'll tell you in a heartbeat to go do what you got to do. But for me, it just took a little bit more time because I am the one that everybody comes to. So I'm a big mental health advocate. Yes. If you need help, seek help, you need somebody to talk to, please go talk to somebody. If you have to take medication, take it in our community. And I mean, our community, it is more difficult to admit those things. Child, you don't need no medicine. What you talking to them folks for? What you telling your business for? Right. Those are some of the things I've heard growing up. And it's yes. like, everybody at that table probably should have been in somebody's couch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Or like I would, people would tell me, well, you just need to get over it. You just need. And I'm like, no, I don't just need to do anything. I need to sit and feel because I was the same, right? I mastered the smile and nod. Mm -hmm. Smile and nod, okay? Yes. And I've always been a very social individual, right? Like I love talking. <laughs> I say talking saved my life. Um, yeah. But anxiety, like I didn't know what anxiety was before, right? I like my thought of anxiety was, oh, you're nervous about a test or nervous about speaking. No. It's a whole nother level. It crippled me. Girl, I would not leave my house. I did not want to leave my home. I would not talk to people, which for my husband was like, hmm. Because I was always, let's go, let's do this. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't do anything. Uh, my moods, I, I will tell you, my husband's final draw was, and Chiquita, you are the first person that I told this to. Oh, wow. Really, because I'm thinking about it as I'm telling you. But this was, this was his final draw with me. I just had this uncontrollable outburst one day, which I've always been the yeller of the house mom you know I'm the mom like no what are y'all doing sit down mm -hmm. my kids are teenagers but you know you still yelling yep. at them I but got this you. particular day and it was an out-of-body experience for me. like I could see myself but I couldn't stop my actions and I cleared our kitchen counter mm -hmm. my computer we had some plates from breakfast that were on the table I had some I had a bowl of ice cream and again, I saw myself do it, but I couldn't stop myself. Mm -hmm. And let's just say we were cleaning the walls and cleaning up, cleaning up glass because I threw the bowl, ice cream everywhere, mm -hmm. glass everywhere from the dishes. I had to get a new laptop. And my husband was like, you are irrational right now. And like, he could not calm me down. He's like, this, you not wanting to go anywhere. Um, and I would just sit in the room all day long, mm -hmm. all day. And he was like, no more, no more. But during that time, and, and I, I do remember this, during this time, I was having some extreme intrusive thoughts mm -hmm. that I was beginning to act upon. Again, I like I can talk about this now and I'm, right, right. I'm chuckling about it, but it hurts my heart to to say it. But I think people need to hear that because, again, mm -hmm. as you were saying, you always see me being ha 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 ha. Mm -hmm. But that was the that was the dark side that was happening Yeah, that, on you know, to see me out because I'm like, yeah, let me just smile and nod. And, uh, yep. But my poor husband and children, 
they were getting hell in the house. Yeah. What people don't see. And, you know, as we were talking before, that's why it's important to just, you know, always check on your people, you know, and ask them those real important questions. You know, how are you feeling? How are you truly feeling? How are you handling it? How are you processing everything? Um, that's one of my main things is like, no, how are you, pro are you processing your feelings? Cause you have to process. I got really big into journaling. I liked writing anyways, but just actually journaling my thoughts at the moment. What do I feel? Not like, I kind of feel sad, but I kind of feel mad. No, I'm mad and I'm sad and I'm angry and I'm hurt. Like just being open to say that, but writing it down and then processing like all those. Okay. Why do you feel this way? All of that made such a big difference in my journey. And I keep all my journals. I said, it's going to be my lifetime, like movie one day <laughs> because it's so much in there, but I keep them because I like to go back at them and say, oh my God, girl, journal number three, you were stripping. <laughs> you was really going through, but look at where you are now. And it really shows that strength and that and that progress. And I think it's important. And I want to thank you for being very open and sharing that part of your journey with me because you you don't have to do that. But I do know someone hearing your story and understanding that, hey, you know, stroke is not only physical, but it is mental. And you have to, you have to nurture both. You're starting all over. You're learning how to talk again, how to walk again. You had, you know, some of your independence taken away and you have to now depend on others when in your mind, you're probably like, no, my, my babies are taking care of me, but I'm supposed to be taking care of them. Like, it's not supposed to be like this right now, you know, the, the, the circle of life. And then just trying to get back to the woman you felt that you were before the stroke. You're like, God, I'm not, I'm not the same. I'm not, you know, I'm very outgoing and I'm not, that's a lot to process mentally. And that's where that mental health part comes into place. Like, you're battling so much in your mind and you're still, you still want to hold everything together, but you kind of can't. So the things you can't control, you no longer have control over. So I just want to say thank you again for sharing that part no, no. of your journey. I, and, you know, I, I tell people, you don't, looking at me physically, you would never know. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, you know, know what? Because we had an ongoing joke in our house for a little bit. Because I don't, my sensation on my left side. Mm -hmm. Wow. I had, I have none. Yeah. So walking. So it's like, oh yeah. Okay. My foot is touching the ground. Right. Mm. But we had an ongoing joke about dishes were broken. Oh, mommy was trying to pick it up with her left hand again. <laughs> oh, <laughs> because I couldn't <laughs> feel it. So, but now I have, you know, I have just kind of worked on it and trained myself to know like, you have something in your left hand. You're fine. You don't, because I feel like I have a slur still. Really? My tongue. Yeah. And that was part of my fear of talking, just talking to people. Because I heard a slur. Mm -hmm. um, I used to have like long pauses in my conversations because just the processing. Like, okay, mm -hmm. the words are here, but they got to come out. But my tongue feels like it weighs a ton. Okay. Talking to you right now, I'm like, ah, oh. but- I record myself all the time, all the time. You sound great. And I'm like, no, you're fine, Sybil. Yeah. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> you're fine. You sound great. And I, I don't hear a slur at all, at all. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. I'm like, oh, because my day, and this is, this goes with the re rediscovery too. Like I had to re, I had to learn who I was again. Like I had to get to know Sybil just everything of how I felt, how I process things mm -hmm. because my processing is off too, right? Like just processing. Oh, well, why are you treating me this way? Oh, things that never bothered me before mm -hmm. comments. Now I'm like, okay, wait a minute. It's something in the brain has rewired itself. So mm -hmm. it's like, okay, step back. Please do not yell at anyone. They didn't mean to cut you off. They didn't mean to, you know, they're just having a casual conversation with you, but you're interpreting what they're saying negatively. That's not what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And so I'm retraining myself to be like, no, step back. Don't, don't pop off on that stranger just because, or even loved ones, you know, I would have outbursts with 
a friend, like a friend of mine, I cussed her up one end and down the other. And she was like, I knew it wasn't you. That was not Sybil. That's not the Sybil I knew. So she let me be. Yeah. But she told me when we see each other again, she going to beat me up. She like, <laughs> <laughs> like, girl, you got a freebie, but no. <laughs> but you okay now. I'm not the same. <laughs> no, it's good to have those that you can be your your authentic self with and know when something's off. I'm really good at responding. I try to always respond. Like I try, even if you call me and I can't answer right now, I'll least say, I'll right back. Like I, I'm really, I don't know why I'm just like, but if I don't do that and when I don't, they're like, okay, something's wrong. You know, something's wrong with Kita. What's going on with Kita? Cause she did not respond. Girl, we knew something was off, but we get, they normally give me like to the next morning. If I don't respond by then, they're like, what are, what? what's going on? Because that's what I always do. I'm a very routine person. Uh, but I appreciate those that know me to that level because when I was at my darkest moments, I needed that. Like I needed that, like, girl, you ain't, you're not answering your phone. You're not talking to anybody. You're not like what's going on. Cause I lost myself and extreme like depression was really scary for me because it was new, right? Like you read about it, you know, you take a test on it get certified talk about it and but when you go through it you're just like one really this is what I'm going through but it was just a very scary time so I'm very thankful for those that know us very well (laughs) like hey something's not right you keep (laughs) oh because I had a friend in San Diego we met in San Diego and she's like hey let's go out for coffee I'm like "Ah, ah." and we went a couple of times but then there were a few times that she would ask me and I would no, I don't feel like it. No, I don't feel like it. Now she didn't know me well, mm-hmm. but she knew my story. So she's like, I'm coming to your house and I'm going to pick you up and we're going out to lunch. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I don't want to go out to lunch with you today. <laughs> but she, she's like, something's wrong. Something is wrong with you. Let's go. And just talking to people, right? It mm-hmm. energizes your soul. It does. It does. So I want to talk about what motivates you. What motivates you? Because you don't always feel like it. We don't always feel like getting up every morning and continuing to motivate others, especially with the couple businesses that you do have. What motivates you in life? You know, I would have to say life. Mm -hmm. Life itself motivates me. So I have breath, get up and do God's work. That is what motivates me. It really does. I've always, you know, I grew up in the church. Mm-hmm. And um, one, one thing that I think about a lot is my granny. My grandmother passed August of 2020. She was 98 years old. Wow. And uh, and I say that's why that's why God kept me on earth because he was like, Miss Roddy said, uh-uh, don't bring her up here. Leave <laughs> on earth. She won't come. I haven't been up here long enough. And she won't come up here talking. <laughs> she said, I need peace. I need peace. Mm, sorry. sorry. That's funny. <laughs> but just knowing that I am here, knowing that I am alive. That's what motivates me every day to get up and do to do what I do. And there are days I don't feel like it. That is very true. But it's like, you know what, Sybil, you are blessed to be here. So get your booty up and you don't have to do anything. Maybe it's as simple as you get up and I have a dog. So walk the dog. But my motivation, you know, being alive and I walk out the door and it's hello. Just a simple hello to a stranger or to one of my neighbors and seeing their happiness. Mm -hmm. So I think seeing other people happy and blessing other people is what motivates me to continue doing day to day. You definitely bring the motivation. (laughs) You do. And I love that life motivates you. I don't be feel like it half time. I don't feel like doing nothing. I try to be intentional about my actions. <laughs> Have intentional goals and be intentional about what I'm doing because I know that 
if I can just inspire or impact one person a day, then my job is good. <laughs> like I feel good. I, I feel like I have accomplished what I set out to accomplish. I also feel that the Lord did not just put me through all of this craziness for nothing. So there's lessons that I've learned. And with everything that I've learned and all my experiences, I'm supposed to do something with that. So this is it. Like, so I cannot, I didn't go through this for nothing. I know. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And see, and I say that too, because my grandmother, she's all, she, I just remember her always talking about everyone has a gift. And when you don't use your gift, mm -hmm. God will snatch your gift. And mm -hmm. I'm like, well, okay. And in 21, I said, so like with male spouse conversations, I have avoided being in the military spouse space for years. I've been married to my sailor for 21 years. Yeah, y'all. I'm, I'm old. I'm seasoned. <laughs> you look good, boo. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, girl. Thank you. Girl. All right. As as a few people have asked me, oh, is that your sister? This is one with my kids. And they're like, no, oh, that's my mom. <laughs> Why are you saying like that? Shoot. <laughs> but I avoided the meal spouse space, right? I, I loved attending events, all of that. And I would have other military spouses say, hey, why don't you bring your energy to the meal spouse community? I'm like, nah, that's not. Mm -mm, that's not what I do. Mm. So I'm over here doing my thing. And I say that God set me down in 21 because he's like, you know what? I have given you a voice. Mm -hmm. I have given you that gift and you keep running. You are disobedient. So, you know, I'm going to pop you upside your head and make you sit down <laughs> and focus and do my work. Yeah. Cause you know, again, I'm like, I, no, I don't. Mm. And over the course of the years, now I'm three years, I'm like, okay, let me show up and let me do what I do. But I will tell you, I started out strong and then just the mental health side got a hold of me and mm -hmm. that fear. And I sat down and I really felt worse when I wasn't doing anything. Mm -hmm. And I think now that I'm actually doing what I'm supposed to do, which is inspiring and empowering people through just my life, just talking about random things. Cause you know, girl, I'm random. <laughs> I talk about everything, 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 anything. I ain't scared. <laughs> Don't be scared, girl, <laughs> tell your story. We talk, we talk about I talk about mom life. I talk about pooping. We mm -hmm. all poop. Yeah. But through all of those, just those random conversations, I have, I feel like I have inspired and blessed so many people. Mm -hmm. Just people, I think I have the gift of gab and transparency and not afraid of being transparent or vulnerable, just talking about random things. As I'm rambling on right now, that's no, what I fine. do. Because <laughs> I right. like right now, I feel like I'm just ah. ah. <laughs> you know, listen. Don't feel like everyone that comes onto the podcast feels like that. They're like, oh, did I talk too much? Did I say too much? I'm like, no, you're fine. You're so sweet. We're talking. This is what we're doing. We're in the same place. You're talking. You're fine. <laughs> you're fine. You're not rambling at all. <laughs> okay. I mean, I am a master rambler. Just <laughs> <laughs> give you that reassurance there you're doing a great job it's funny when you when you talk about like the military spouse community because I'm, I'm dual right so I'm military spouse but I'm also a soldier but I don't go to nothing unless I have to and I, I don't I don't I know and with the military spouse community I I think I still do I avoid it I do I avoid it because for me I don't feel I can relate sometimes. So when like when military spouse is talking about like the soldier work and, you know, leaving, and go, well, I have to, too, sometimes. And I have to leave my kids, too. And we switch 
off, you know, I got to go here. So I felt judged in that community because I am also the soldier. So I can also relate to where your husband coming from too, but I can't. So it was difficult for me to find my, my comfort in that. So I just don't go. I don't, I just avoid it. I just, I just, I don't, I don't do that. So I just stay you know, I'm a soldier. I'm a military spouse, but no, I'm not going to go do that. And if I do go to an event, it's always, it's not as a military spouse, it's as Major Mac. So I will go as my uniform self and talk to your spouse in that uniformed way, but never on the other side as I am the spouse with the rank off. Yeah. So now is, so are both you and your husband army? Yeah, we're both army officers. Okay. Because mm-hmm. I was like, wait a minute. I was like, are you dual army? Mm-hmm. We're dual army. He's a captain. I'm a major. Okay. See, look, I'm like, let me think. We're Navy. So. Yeah. So army, not Navy, the same. Y'all, y'all now, so home. your husband is what? A colonel? Full bird? Yes. Yeah. For so the he- army. But, or, you know, we could, we say captain. In the yeah. Cap, yep. So captain, he's, he's. <laughs> He's yeah, so equivalent. Yeah, there we go. We're good. Yeah. So your husband a big dog. <laughs> but you know what's funny? This is this is something that I find funny in this is in, in the mills. I'm gonna say this, right? I, yeah, yeah. Most people when they meet me, most spouses when they meet me, they don't connect that I am an officer spouse. Which is perfectly fine with me because I'm like, look, I'm civil. My husband, what my husband does is what my husband does. Because when you meet me, hi, I'm Sybil Jones. Mm -hmm. I am not Captain Jones's wife. Mm -hmm. I'm Sybil Jones. (laughs) He's my husband. There you go. (laughs) Yeah. So I so for me, I I love military events. I love the military lifestyle because I just love moving Mm -hmm. people. But being in the space was really hard for me because, again, I'm like, I am me. I'm not showing up as my husband's wife, like my identity. This is who I am. But that goes along with the whole inspiration and empowerment that Mm -hmm. I bring. And that's what... That's what I do in everything I do in everything in everyday life and in business. It's all about inspiring you to be who you are. Like, yep. who are you? Shoot. I want to know you. I don't care who your husband is. I don't care who your active duty husband, you know, spouse mm-hmm. is who are you. Cause when you start telling me about your spouse, that's active duty. I'm like, um, this is, this is what I would say to you. Yeah. If you were telling me about your husband, I meet you mm-hmm. and you're telling me and you're a spouse, you tell me about your husband. I'm like, hey, hold on. Um, are you trying to hook us up? I don't no. I have a husband. No, I don't even know about your, your husband. Tell me about you. Mm-hmm. Let, let's get to know one another. You tell me about who your husband is and what he does. I don't care. Yeah, I don't. I don't care. But I sound I'm the worst. So my husband is the talker. He talks to everybody. I don't. And. I don't, I don't care. And I say that because when I, when we do go to the military events, like, man, where do you want to be stationed next? Man, what do you, I don't, mm. I work all, I don't want to talk army. I don't care. I, I don't want to, I just don't want to talk about it. And I know we're in a military environment, but I don't, I'm tired. Y'all I've been seeing y'all all day and then y'all still want to talk work. And then it's like, oh, well, do you think, what positions do y'all have over there? I don't want to hire you. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. I, I don't. And it's just because I'm just tired. I, I, I put on a uniform and that's the uniform that I'm in for the day. But yeah, that's not who I am. I don't, I don't care. You go talk to Charles. He over there, he'll talk to you all day. He will talk to you about everything. Did you want to talk about army? I don't want to talk about. Them. No, thank you. <laughs> that like I because that that's me as the spouse too, right? Because everyone, it's funny because everyone's like, "Oh, meal spouse conversations." You're talking about military. No, that's no, we're not. 
we'll talk about it some, but we're also talking about everyday life. Like, yeah. And let's talk about, let's get more into mill spouse conversations. And one, I want to know what, I know it's your gift, but what sparked you to say, I'm going to do this. And then yes, walk me through what it's like to be part of your community, because it may be a community that I can possibly finally relate to, right? I don't have to go in and talk about stuff I don't really care about. (laughs) And I don't have people that judge me and say, how could you leave your kids like that? Um... I don't know as much as I'm. <laughs> right. Tell me, tell me about your community. <laughs> well, look, I will tell you this. We're a diverse panel. So I have four other conversation starters. And we have Navy, we have a Navy veteran, mm-hmm. and then we have um, an Army. Her husband was active duty Army, turned Army National Guard, now retired. And we have a Marine spouse and we have um, three races because I'm about like when, when we say we're diverse, because I will say this a lot of times in the male spouse community, most of your platforms don't look like us. Just say it. Yes. They don't look like us. (laughs) They do not look like us. They don't look like me. And I wear the uniform like. Right. But it's true. It's true. It's true. They don't. So I'm like, you know what? We have, there's two black ladies. I have a Hispanic lady. And then there's two white ladies. We different ages. Mm -hmm. I'm not the oldest. We do have one lady who's a little older than me. So Mm -hmm. I'm not the oldest. (laughs) (laughs) And different ranks. And we just come together and we do a talk show and we do it every Wednesday and we talk about life. We are, look, we are rogue, 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 rogue. We do virtual events and we do events around the globe in person. And we just, we bring a topic and we talk about it. What you see is what you get. Yeah. That's I'm like, what you see right here is what you get. We're That's real. the best thing about it. Yeah, I'm being real, real, being your true, authentic selves, being real, showing up for each other and spreading that and showing that you can be yourself. You don't have to wear your husband's rank. You can be who you are and we can have true conversations. And that's what I love because I see you... <laughs> Your interviews and your y'all's conversation, and it is everyone I feel like is literally being themselves. There's not one person I feel like that is like today. We're, you're like, no, you guys are truly who you are, and I think that makes your space so much better. Yes, and they because I do not give the ladies the topics until right before. It's even better because really- I'm like, look, I don't want you to rehearse your answer. Like last mm-hmm. week, last week we talked about our favorite cleaning products. Ooh. But but see, I had a twist because being real, I'm like my favorite for the bathroom because you know sometimes That's you got to clean one. that toilet. But you got to clean that toilet after you drop the kids off at the pool. You leave the little skid marks. <laughs> I think you. I guess that would talk about. <laughs> It's so funny, yeah. Hey, or you know, if we do have a military topic, we're still very real about it. We're we're like we're not here to tell you how to maneuver. We we share our personal stories. That's what we do, and we want to hear our community's personal stories. So, if we do any event, virtual or in person. We bring the topic, we do the intro, but now everyone has a chance to talk. It's not a presentation. It's not us telling you that, no, let's talk. We have cried, we have laughed, we have cussed, and I I have a potty mouth. I am married to a sailor. (laughs) But my sailor does not, he doesn't have a potty mouth. I do. (laughs) Come out sometimes, come out sometimes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> it's who you are. 
Not it's the potty it's- mouth, not just all of that, but you're being, again, who you are, your authentic selves. And you do show up to your community very well and true to yourself. So please continue doing that as you continue on your rediscovery journey and you know everything you're giving to male spouse conversations. Please just continue to be who you are truly meant to be because you are I know it can be tough you don't always feel like it and you may have like am I doing what am I doing no keep showing up for you and keep inspiring as your authentic self that's the only way that is (laughs) (laughs) and as I I am still discovering rediscovering Mm -hmm. who this new symbol is but I have accepted but when you mentioned about the pain and the anger Mm -hmm. earlier, I did not know how to feel my emotions. I didn't know how, because life prior to my escapade, Mm -hmm. I felt like I was always just skipping through the field of sunflowers. Mm -hmm. Life was good. Life was really good. So this just totally devastated me. It blindsided me because I did not fit the normal stroke, I don't want, I hate to say victim, but stroke, warriors, physical and health cause, right? I I just didn't. And so it just totally took the wind out of me. And so it's like, okay, now I've got to, you know, and I would be angry I didn't know why I was angry. People were like, why are, why are you mad? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but now I have accepted, you know, I'll get in the shower every morning. I listen to my gospel music and I allow myself to feel. Yes. I just cry. It's or so- I'll ask my kids if they want a hug. I'm like, do y'all want a hug? They're like, no, you need a hug. Because mm-hmm. I still haven't admitted that I need hugs. So I yeah. asked them if they want a hug. <laughs> Come here, mom. Let me let me give you a hug. <laughs> let me give yes. you a hug. Let me give you a hug. Yes. Or even for my husband, um, you know, because I am not, I am not, I'm affectionate, but I'm not affectionate. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm like, oh, like I'll hug like this. Okay. <laughs> church hug? I call it the church hug. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. And my husband's like, in 21 years, he's like, Pebble. I was like, dude, you knew this was me before we got married. But now, oh, is that you too? Yes. I feel like you're talking. Like, I feel like you're talking about me, but you're talking about you. I'm the same way. I'm like, and so uh, it's funny is that we talk about um, five love languages, the love languages. And my husband is definitely the affection. And I'm like, so I'll say stuff like, is your cup full? Like you keep hugging me, like your cup should be full. Like I don't have, so when you're filling your cup, you're taking from mine (laughs) and I can't give no more. (laughs) (laughs) It's so funny that I'm like, okay, I'm not the only one in the world like this. And I'm like, my husband's like, you know, Sybil, most women would love for their husband to just hold them. And he's like, you're all like, mm. <laughs> I'm like, dear, I love it. But then I'm always like, okay, that's enough. That's enough. I'm so. <laughs> yes. I'm like, that was three seconds. <laughs> three seconds. <laughs> that was one more second longer than you had yesterday. You should be happy. I got to go. <laughs> But now I'm like, can you just hold me? Yeah. And he's like, just let it all out. But I, I'm like, but I don't want to cry. <laughs> yeah, get it out. <laughs> just having that ugly cry. I'm like, okay, I'm releasing. Release those emotions. Yeah. I don't have yeah. to hold. Because as you were saying too earlier about yeah. our community, right? Because I remember when I was in the hospital, I did talk to some friends and family, they called, and I started crying. And someone was like, why are you crying? And I'm like, I don't know. Well, this is nothing to cry about. Hmm. 
you're and the response was this is nothing to cry about you're alive be grateful okay i am grateful but hello there is for me there was there's a whole chunk of time that i have no regulation of like i just i don't yeah and waking up in the hospital you know they asked me my name did i know where i was no i did like nothing i'm like uh and i woke up i'm like why what are these machines like what's going on mm -hmm. and so once i did start talking to people i'm like all right so i i just held that in like okay i shouldn't be crying i should be grateful and mm -hmm. it's like hey i was grateful but it's also <laughs> it's okay to be angry mm -hmm. be scared right because even still to this day, it's like, okay, what if this happens again? Mm -hmm. It's always going to be there. Yeah. What is going on? What is happening? This could happen again. Or as the doctors told me, as long as your stint hold, you're good. Well, how would I know if it doesn't? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think people forget the part where we are supposed to be allowed to process our feelings and and people always like to put a timeline on when you should be okay I don't know how that work out but it always seems to work that way like you should be over it by now you shouldn't still be talking about that girl that was like two years ago you still talking about I am because I'm still processing because I couldn't process it then but I can process it now because I'm in a place to where I can receive all those things so stop putting the timeline on people y'all like it's it's our journeys for a reason you know my journey is my journey your journey is your journey and it's important to meet people where they are and but to also understand like don't judge them where they're at understand where they were and try to see their progress in that I just think it's important to just allow people to feel your feelings I teach that to my kids like What's wrong? No, what? Okay, okay. What are you feeling right now? Like, what exactly are you feeling right now? Because it's important for them to understand their feelings and to process what you mad. It's okay. Like, I tell my daughter something. You got, you got to. It's okay. You got to have to, girl. You got to have to. You can be mad, but listen. What I'm gonna need you to do though. <laughs> but right. still, it's it's okay to to tell them that because I grew up where it was like, girl, stop crying. We ain't got time for that. Do it as you know. Do as I say, not as I do. Don't ask no questions. Blah blah blah. blah. And all it did was make me have more questions. Like, well, why? Why? <laughs> yes. You know, so uh, I think it's important to feel. So even as adults, like, I don't know what happens where, you know, you can cry when you're a child, but when you get, I don't know, an adult, you can't cry. That's not true. I need you to cry it out. I need you to feel. I need you to be vulnerable sometimes, which is difficult. That's something I struggled with. Ask for help when you need it and receive love. Receive yes. it. Take receive. it in. Yes. yes, we give it all day, but I need you to be able to receive like that hug. Like my son will randomly hug me at all times of the day. He's really like, mom, let me just give you. And I'm like, boy, what you want? What you try to ask for? I'm like, what you ask for? <laughs> but, okay, let me enjoy it, you know, because I got too many more years for you out the house, you know. <laughs> um, so it's just important to really, you know, receive those, those things. Yes, for sure. For yes. sure. Yes. And you talking about the kids because, you know, my oldest is in college. She's a sophomore in college. Mm -hmm. And she'll call or text me. And I'm like, my first response, girl, what you want? Mm -hmm. And she's like, I'm just checking on you. But I'm like, nah, you want some more money. Mm -hmm. You better text your father on that one. You know my name's going to be no. No. <laughs> yeah, no more. No more. No, I'm just like, I'm just calling to check on you. That's mm -hmm. all. But yeah, Aww. it's always, yeah, you're thinking, yeah, they want something. What they want from me, what they want. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. So talk to me about what you got, mamas and coffee. What's that about? Mm, it's not about coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so Mamas and Coffee was actually my first little adventure that I went on. And it's all about inspiring and empowering women to know, be, and love who they are. So I'm really big on self-esteem and self-love. 
Mm -hmm. Those are my things in self-care. So mamas and coffee, talk about life. Mm -hmm. Again, it's all about life with me. <laughs> it's talking about life. Mamas and coffee. I have a community with that as well. So it's a website and then we have a community where we just talk a little out of pocket sometimes. <laughs> it's the best it's not you know because people are like oh is it about motherhood i'm like well you know you want to talk about parenting uh you want no parenting advice from me trust me you don't <laughs> we learned by experience okay there's no book on parenting <laughs> yeah it's like mm, i don't know what i'm doing i'm still figuring this out shoot each stage is different <laughs> but no mama's and coffee it's just all of, again, just inspiring and empowering women. Mm. That self-identity, I'm self-love, self-care, and that self-identity. Like, who are you? Don't lose who you are just because you're a mom, right? Like, nah, you are more than being a mom. Mm -hmm. So are you. Yeah. Be you. I know yeah. it's it's a lot of fun. We we get, like I said, we get out of pocket sometimes. It's the best. You know, oh, we all, you know, as moms, we all have a kid. So how you, we all know, oh, how you got that kid? Oh, Listen. So, so yeah, we we we've had those conversations. We mm -hmm. <laughs> again, some folks are like, oh, but hey, we just so important. Rediscovery is important, and that's how I started. When I initially started the Chiquita Mac was the focus of rediscovering who you were before the chaos, before, you know, before the kids and all of that, really understanding who you are. And that was a question that I had struggled with for many years of who is Chiquita Mac? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what that means. I don't really know who I am. I just wanted to pour all my energy into the kids because it was easier than dealing with my stuff and my past traumas. So I lost myself for a little bit. But yeah, so that's, I love that you have that platform because it's important for us. We, like you said, we are whole women, whole women before, you know, the babies. And so understanding to be intentional about your actions as a mom, meaning scheduling time for yourself, really big on those things, loving who you are, getting dressed up for yourself and just really stepping into who you are and who you want to be like, start that career. Start that dream, write that book, build that journal, sell that merch, be, whatever you want to do, do it. I say, do it. Yep. There's no time limit for it. Stop waiting till the baby's 18. That's too long. Start now. Oh, Figure man. out as you go. Let your dream grow with the babies grow. Let, let it all grow together. And, yes. you know, implement those things with your kids. Like my kids are very like, what are you doing? Are you doing my, the Chiquita Max? So TCM, like, are you doing TCM stuff? I am, which I need. Okay. <laughs> you know, like the. <laughs> they know like okay mommy's doing tcm or mommy has a speaking for tcm and understand like it's important for them to say you know what i do and what i do it for and the meaning behind it so that way it's a whole family so when it comes june back to school time i'm like i know we got all these boxes we got to get ready for back to school we got 300 schools we got 300 you know boxes to give students we got to pack this up so they know thanksgiving time trey mom i gotta carry them turkeys you already know you gotta carry them turkeys we gotta get ready I get ready to go. Let's go. We got to go get the turkeys. We got families waiting on us. So it's important to just, you know, include your babies in your dream. You know, yes. don't lose who you are, but include them so that they know. And then now, now he's older. He's in school. He's like, can you sign off on my community hours? I'm like, uh? I don't want me to sign <laughs> for your hours. <laughs> like, uh. <laughs> but, you know, because I have my kids. They, they work for me. Yeah. And I, yeah, I involved them in everything that I've done, especially with Mamas and Coffee. Um, mm -hmm. I have two, actually all three of them have written for me, but now they're too, they're like, they're too old. They don't have time. I'm like, sit down. Let's do, it. Like, do a video with me. My kids will not make a TikTok with me, but I see you and your kids. What? <laughs> I'm jealous. Like <laughs> <laughs> We love it. There's one, my son's trying to teach me right now. I don't know how that one's going to look. 
because it's a little difficult. I'm like, before I could keep up, I don't know if I can keep up right now. He's like, you're not going to do the dance challenge, mom? Come on, you got to do the dance challenge. And when he posts me on his TikTok, it does well because they're like, you're mom. So he's like, mom, we, it's about time. I'm like, before I was like, come on, I need y'all to make content for me. Now he's like, come on, I need you to make content for me. <laughs> See the rules everywhere. They're like, ah. it's so funny. And then I like go and read the little comments and they're like, hey, Mama Mac, Mama Mac, hey, okay, Mama Mac. And I'm like, okay, I'm Mama Mac now. All right, cool. Yeah. But you're like, yeah, let me pop my collar. It's like, yeah, your mama still got it. <laughs> <laughs> my kids are like no they're like no I'm not because I'm I've asked them to do a dance I was like let's dance and they're like mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> I'm dancing with you they're like or my youngest she's 15 so my kids are 15 17 and 19 uh -huh. oh girl and my youngest mommy come on you hear the beat come on <laughs> and I'm like yes because that was something too after my stroke I could not find the beat. Like my rhythm was gone. It's back, but I worked mm -hmm. extremely hard. My best friend came and stayed with us. And she was like, come on, Sybil. Got the metronome going. Mm -hmm. I'm like, are you serious? Like, why are you doing this to me? She's like, come on. <laughs> yeah. So I had to work to get my rhythm, which again, weird, right? Like that's mm -hmm. stuff you don't think about. Yeah. So now I'm like, okay, let's do a TikTok. They're like, nah, <laughs> not mm -hmm. doing a video. Which I haven't done a lot of videos, but I'm trying. I'm trying to get back into into the video. But yeah, Mamas and Coffee. Again, it's that self love, that self care, and me time. I talk a lot about me time. Take your me time. Mm -hmm. It is your time to do what yes. you enjoy. It's time for you to clear your mind. And refresh your body and yes. soul. And, you know, with having older kids and one in college and one who will be leaving for college next year or this summer, I will say, how do I, how do I say this without sounding horrible? Your kids, as they grow up, they move on. They mm -hmm. love you, but they've moved on. They're not hanging out with you like they were or like they needed to when they were little. Mm -hmm. Now, as mom as of older kids, they need you in a different way. Yep. But they don't want to be around you. And when I first started having kids, when I had my first daughter, my granny, again, a lot of my, I'd say my wisdom comes from my grandmother, which Mine too. is this little bear that's right here. Oh. It gave me this bear when I was born. So this oh, bear is 40 I love years it. Old. And sit, he sits right here. So anytime I'm about to say or do anything bad, I hear the voice, Bootsy. It's, I'm like, okay, yes, Granny. I, I know that I was out of pocket for that. <laughs> but um, she told me, she's like, don't forget who you are. Even when I got married, when I first got married, she's like, don't forget who you are. Always remember who you are. Your okay. husband needs you. You are there to support your husband, but you have to have your own identity. And I'm like, and I didn't understand that yeah. at the time. And then I'm like, okay, I get it. Because again, you get wrapped up. I had my own career. So me and my husband met in college mm -hmm. and I had my own career. I had my own goals, um, but being a military spouse. I actually quit working, not because of moving all the time, but because I started having babies and I didn't want anybody else to take care of them. Yeah. But there was a time that my baby started getting on my nerves and I did put them in daycare and I went to work because I needed a break. Needed a it's break. Like, I know that probably sounds really bad. but No, it's, it's the, the truth. truth. It's the truth. Yeah. So I was like, I'm going back to work. But one, the other thing she told me is after I had our oldest, she's like, do not lose yourself in your child. You still take time for yourself. Do the things you want to do for yourself. Yes. You can leave that baby at home with her father and go out and do something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not clubbing. I wasn't clubbing. 
But, you know, I would go have lunch with a friend or just go out and sit alone. Mm -hmm. And I have carried that through. And even just fixing myself up, get dressed, put on clothes, do Mm -hmm. something for you. Know who you are. Your kids love you. But again, I'm a 19-year-old. She's living her own life. Well, semi, living her own life right now. (laughs) She still called home talking about I need some money. That's always. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, but Mamas and Coffee is, and we have a good time. We talk about, again, everything. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I shared with, so, because I had a question one day. And I asked my community. Okay, this is this is TMI, but that's okay. That's okay. Mm-hmm. And it goes back to my stroke. So you know, I told you my whole left side. Right. The entire left side. So that. I had to readjust a little right. bit. So I'm like, okay, guys, what's, because it's like, all right, you got to get the, because the left side, you're like, um, yeah, that's, it, it's not working right now. So can yes. we? What do I do? All right. <laughs> so I brought it up. I was like, let me just ask if, because you don't know. Yeah. Right? You don't know who else. They have that experience. And I I did end up asking the doctor. I was like, let's just ask the doctor with my husband sitting there. Yeah. And he the doctor, just keep practicing. Mm. Just keep practicing. See if the see if the if the feeling it'll come back. back. I'm like, and my husband's like, yeah, we can we can make that happen. We'll keep practicing. I'm like, but it's just the left side. It's- yeah. <laughs> He's like, we'll it's- practice our, we got a whole practice schedule ready for you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how my husband was. He was like, yeah, we, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Like, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> sorry, oh my sorry, goodness. Sorry. You're so funny. <laughs> but hey, oh that's, that's knowledge people need to know, right? They need- Yes, they do. And to practice and keep practicing. Well, <laughs> and to practice. <laughs> but no, intimacy is is an important conversation. It, it is. Really- it really is. It really is. And I don't know if that's a whole nother um, podcast episode right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, do you care to share with the audience, anything that you have upcoming or anything that you're currently working on? Well, currently it is, I am, I don't want to say hoping. I I will have my Stroke Talks website launched soon. (laughs) By the end of January, it will be launched, ready to go. And uh, we'll have content there, blog posts, as well as videos with monthly um, virtual meetups to talk about stroke. Yeah. Because in our community, I will say this too, in our community, it is the highest mortality rate of stroke. Yep. And every community I have joined for stroke support no one's there that looks like me. Now, we can say it's a high mortality rate, but there are stroke survivors who look like you and I, but mm-hmm. we're not there sharing. Mm-hmm. So I'm, that's what I'm working on to bring that community. It's needed. It's needed. Bringing that awareness and telling our community it's okay to talk about it and to share. And I think once they see that they can be in a safe place where others looks, looks like them, 
um, and can have those true and open conversations. It'll be so beneficial, especially for the other aspect that we talked about today, which is that mental health part. It's so hard for us to find a safe space for us where we won't be judged and we can have others that have shared those things be there. So I want to thank you for finally, you know, being, going out there, exploring and saying, okay, look, we have to make a community for our, for our people so that they can come and talk about this. Cause I know I'm not the only one. It's just, there's not a safe space for our people to come. So I'm excited that you're doing this. I can't wait until you get it up and running. Let me know. And I will definitely put it on all my platforms to get people to, uh, to bring awareness to it. Definitely let me know. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You so very much. You're welcome. I am so thankful that you were able to join me for this podcast. It has been everything I thought it would be inspirational and more. And I want to thank you for trusting me with your story and trusting me with your journey. Can you tell the listeners where they can find you on social media? Oh, oh, I forgot. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you can find me at Mom Jones, M O M J O N Z, um, Stroke Talks with Sybil, S Y B I L, and Mill Spouse Conversation. But if you find me at Mom Jones, everything filters into Mom Jones. <laughs> yes. And I will have everything linked in the show notes so you can know whichever platform fits you the most. You have a place to join. You can click and be a part of it. Thank so, you. Yeah. For thank you. Thank you. This thank you. It was great. Yay. Thank you so much. I am super excited. All right, you guys, that is it for the Beauty and You podcast today. Until next time. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode of the Beauty and You podcast. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. Visit us at thechiquitamac.com or join us on Instagram at thechiquitamac for your daily motivation and inspiration. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Until next time.